You're listening to the Full Court Press with your host, Drew Duncan. Don't you dare touch that dial. Welcome back to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. We're live on 99.5 ESPN Radio. Emporia's home for sports. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at DrewDuncan83. You can also call in at 620-343-6143. That's 620-343-6143. Speaking of the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, this is from Carson, who is at MMA Husker. Is it really a big deal that transfers are happening after a new coach with a system comes in? A QB that doesn't fit in the system at all. A wide receiver whose dad was on the former staff. No big deal for me. Man, these guys were so out of shape. Let me see here because he goes on here. These guys were so out of shape, they couldn't even handle the workouts with Frost around. Now, some of that I chose to leave out uh, because I simply do not agree with the wording. Uh, but here's here's the bottom line here, Carson, if you're still out there listening. It is a big deal. And I don't think that there is a coach in the world that wouldn't tell you that. Now, granted, Scott Frost said, look, he went on, you know, he said he's done everything that he asked him to do. And referring to Patrick O'Brien, the quarterback who transferred out of there. Uh, but losing your skill position players and not understanding or knowing anything about most of your team, it will be a big deal. And you know why it's going to be a big deal? Because we saw what happened in his first year there at Central Florida. How successful were they? Not at all. Scott Frost is one of those coaches that I think takes a little while to get acclimated with his guys, know what their strengths and weaknesses are, and with so little time that he has to work with anybody anyways, everybody's got to kind of re-get to know each other and how much time are they really going to have to do it in. That's a big deal especially in college sports because you get a spring game, maybe some summer practice in or summer camps with those guys. And it's really about it. There's not a lot of time there in any college coach. will tell you that at the time that frost was hired, he was already on limited time, already on limited time. Had it been like December, January, that, that would have been one thing, but he was on limited time. I'm telling you right now, it was a big deal. You, you, you've got guys that are acclimated with each other already and they leave. Doesn't fit the system. I get so sick of hearing about system style quarterbacks. I really get tired of hearing about that. And, and look, Carson, for the most part, I, I can see your plight. And it's like I said earlier, though, if you're a good coach, as Urban Meyer has pointed out, then your kids are your kids and you can either coach them or you can't. And that's just the real reality of it. So it doesn't matter whether or not somebody can fit his system or not. If he's truly a great coach, then whatever he wants, he can get the most out of whoever. That's what a coach does. You see, Urban Meyer got an Ohio State team who wasn't even allowed to play in the postseason to go undefeated. How many coaches would do that? And a lot of people transferred out of there, and he got it done. That's because Urban Meyer is a great coach. It doesn't matter who he has, he can make it work. He won the Big Ten Championship with a third-string quarterback, made him look like he was NFL-ready, and only had a few days to work him into the system. That's the kind of coach that Urban Meyer is. Now, I understand that coaches like that are few and far in between, but let's be honest about it for a minute here. It would have been better to hire Scott Frost directly after Bo Pelini than it would have been to hire Mike Riley. Because at least when you had that situation, you had Scott Frost who would have been coming directly out of Oregon, already kind of in a similar type system that they were sort of beginning to transition over to with some of that spread option look and Taylor Martinez and those other guys. You you would have been kind of getting into that. You took three steps back when you brought in Mike Riley 
who had a horrendous record, wasn't really that great, was already winning less games in the ever-powerful Pac-12 than he... I mean, come on. The Big Ten, the competition is so much deeper. You took so many steps back, and then you're reverting back to a completely different system, and now you ask Scott Frost to come in and go to another completely different system, and you lose a very sought-out quarterback in Patrick O'Brien. You lose Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah, that's a big deal. I I would say that is a very big deal. Keep him coming. Keep him coming, Carson. I love debate, my amigo. Love debate. At Drew Duncan 83, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Carson chose the Twitter to get at me. Again, he was from uh, at MMA Husker. Got quite a few followers there, by the way, bro. Moving on. Carson, if you're out there listening, you are at MMA Husker. Maybe you'll appreciate this. Tito Martinez says that he didn't get a fair shot in the first two chances that he had when he fought Chuck Liddell in the UFC. Now, I didn't know that getting knocked out means he didn't have a fair shot. We're not talking about going to the judges. We're not talking about any of that. And Chuck Liddell was under the impression that Tito Ortiz was afraid of him anyways. And the first time he beat him, if I remember correctly, uh, Chuck Liddell defended his title and beat Tito. And the other time that he beat him uh, was a year later. It wasn't for a title or anything like that. Uh, But, you know, there were people that were kind of in agreement with Chuck that they felt like Ortiz was ducking him a little bit. And when he fought him, he beat the hell out of him again. Tito Ortiz claims that he's in great shape and his age doesn't matter. And he went on to talk about other guys that have fought that I already kind of brought up in this situation before. And, and, and then that whole scenario, um, here's the deal. And I'm only going to say this one more time. And then after that, until this fight happens, and even then I'm probably, uh, not going to really give it a whole lot of my time. Uh, the fact of the matter is this. If Tito Ortiz couldn't beat Chuck Liddell when they were in their primes, basically, how's he going to do it now? I will say this. He looks like he's uh, in better shape than Liddell. And, And I talked about the last time I talked about this fight, how Liddell is the guy that, I mean, if you've seen him walking, it's basically like you would really think that his career is over. And we got to remember, though, the one thing that I believe that Tito could have in this fight is that he's not nearly as far removed from MMA as Chuck Liddell. But to me, though, when I start reading these things and start looking at some of these quotes, I, I, I just, I, to me, it reeks of desperation. It really does. It reeks of desperation to me. I'm not so sure that I like this matchup on 101 different levels. And here's some of what Tito Ortiz has to say. Tito Ortiz versus Chuck Liddell 3, the fight that all the fans wanted to see for the longest time and never got a chance to. I never got a fair shake when I was with the UFC against Chuck any of the times I ever fought against him. Tito continued. Let's do it under a different promotion. Let's do it under Golden Boy promotion. He has a great background in promoting fights, some of the biggest fights in the world, and he bid on it. Hook, lied, and seeker. He's in. Let's see if we can make some history here. Again, Tito would talk about the fight date. He said, look, I'm not exactly sure. October, November. That way we have some time to promote. We'll do a world tour, kind of go around, talk smack to build up the fight. Basically, uh, trying to be like McGregor and Mayweather, bro. Was that what that is? Uh, I just, I don't know. And again, Tito went on to say, I only retired a year ago. I got in the gym two weeks ago. And let me tell you, I bounced back faster than I imagined I could bounce back. I've always been in good shape. I take care of my body, and I've got an opportunity to get redemption. 
And he talked about Randy Couture winning at age 43, et cetera, et cetera. And talk, just, just kept saying that he feels healthy. Chuck Liddell hasn't been in MMA in eight years, guys. Why he took this fight is still beyond me. It's really still beyond me. I have zero idea why he took this fight. We know why Tito Ortiz is taking this fight. Isn't it becoming a little bit more obvious? I never got a fair shake. You got you got knocked out twice, bro. I mean, literally, in both fights, he ended up down, curled up on the ground like a newborn baby child, and he got knocked out. He got beat. That's all there is to it. I don't want to hear this. You didn't get a fair shake, bro. You had an opportunity to take a fight. You waited a whole year to do it. And then when you did it, look what happened again. I don't want to hear about how long you had to train. I don't want to hear about none of that. Because nobody makes anybody take a fight. The UFC just dropped the guy because he kept refusing fights. Nobody makes you take a fight. They may drop you for it, but nobody makes you do it. So let's be perfectly honest here. Okay? Tito is five years younger. He's not nearly far removed from the sport as Chuck Liddell is. He's looking to basically redeem himself in this whole matter and take advantage of a guy that we know is not in shape. It's been eight years. He's basically too old, and that's it. And he probably thinks that he could snake him and get him like this. I would say that if he wins this fight, there's no real honor in it, man. And I'm just being straight up. And that's not a guy who's being a Chuck Liddell fan. That is a guy that is looking at the facts. Eight years versus nine months of no action. He wants to do a world tour for what? We we wanted to see Liddell versus Ortiz number three ten years ago. Eight years ago. Nine years ago. Six years ago. Five years ago. That time has passed. What's both? What What? what do either one of these guys have to gain other than maybe one final payday? You're not going to get out of this what Mayweather and McGregor got. Let's do a world tour and promote this. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get that from Lydell because he's been gone for eight years. And I think that more people are heartbroken by the fact that Lydell's climbing back into a, an octagon than they are anything else. What was it? Nate called this show a week and a half ago and said, man, I'm a big, huge Lydell fan. I don't know why he's doing it. I'll root for him, but I'm not expecting anything great. I mean, that's probably one of the most realistic things that I have heard anybody say. And that was from a fan calling in. We know exactly what's going on here if we're able to look at this as for what it really is, and that is Tito trying to just get one over on him, get a final payday. Dude, they are not nearly on the level of Mayweather McGregor. Chuck Liddell was at one point in MMA. He was. But now? I don't know. This whole thing is so disheartening and sad that I don't even know how to really accurately articulate exactly what I'm feeling. But I will say this. If this fight is even halfway decent, we'll call it a victory. But I, I, I can't understand why Oscar De La Hoya could not find some other guys that are no longer in the UFC that are maybe not very far removed or, or maybe, you know, go picking after Bellator guys or, you know, bringing guys up from Shamrock FC or something. I don't because Oscar De La Hoya is a big enough name, especially in the world of promotion from what he's done with Mayweather and other guys that he could practically bring up anybody and probably get decent numbers on a pay-per-view or a local TV, whatever the case may be, that he would he would probably get some ratings. You've got how many guys that are here in the state of Kansas alone? you got Chris Harris that you could pull from, Stephen Wynn, you could bring up in the ranks? Come on. I, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why Oscar De La Hoya went after these guys. I mean, would he do it in boxing? Would he bring up somebody in his 40s, 45? 46, 47, 48 years old, out of boxing, retirement to go and do something like Witty, would, would his own sport. But think about that for a minute. I just, I don't know. This whole thing is a little uh, disheartening. 620-343-6143. That's 
Three four three six one four three. We still got a lot to get to. We still got more NBA playoffs to talk about. Uh, we still have uh, plenty to get to. We still got some football to talk about as well with Baker Mayfield. Plenty to go off of, guys. Six two zero three four three six one four three is the number. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan eighty three. At ninety nine five on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on the flip side, plenty more to get to. Don't you dare touch that dial.